Hey, MVPs, Rico Knows here. Going to talk to you guys about the win totals for 2024. If you don't know, we're doing all futures bets. If you're a new MVP, you've been missing them. There is a playlist for it on Patreon. Uh, the playlist is like futures or something like that. It's, it's for college football. On YouTube, there's a playlist for it as well. Uh, these videos will be added to the playlist, so just find the playlist and watch them all. Um, so let's talk about Michigan. We're in the Big Ten. We already did all the ACC, and we're looking at Michigan, and they have Michigan's over-under at 9.5 wins. Pretty interesting. If you look, you get positive money if Michigan were to win more than nine games in the regular season. Um, that sounds absurd because they just went undefeated and won the national title. How are they not going to win nine games? And then it's got that negative 192 money there for them to be under 9.5 wins. Well, I'm pretty sure that we can go over their schedule and you guys will see why it's the way it is. But let's talk about it. Firstly, the picture down below. Yeah, new head coach. Now, offensive coordinator moved to head coach. But when you lose somebody like Jim Harbaugh, that should tell you how much you've lost. Don't think for a second that you can just keep it moving the way you were when you had Jim Harbaugh. If, if that's the case, if you can replace Jim Harbaugh, then he wasn't that good. And I refuse to believe that. I think he's an exceptional coach. I think he's done well everywhere he's been, including San Francisco, including Stanford, including San Diego, uh, the Toreros. Like, this guy is the real deal. Jim Harbaugh's great. And the fact that he's leaving, it leaves a, a cupboard that's bare, a ton of NFL talent is departing, and I don't necessarily see them getting over nine and a half wins. I can tell you that right now. But let me let me go break it down for you guys. So you go back and look in 2023. Um, sorry about that. 2023. And you see they walked right through the competition. They didn't have a competitive game until Penn State, maybe, if you consider that a competitive game. But it wasn't until November. They were dominating teams. And they were doing it with stifling defense. If you were trailing in the game and you thought you could pass on them, you're wrong. They had an absorbent amount of sacks because teams couldn't pass protect against that defensive front. They had the best front seven out there, and then they had quality defensive backs. Uh, and it paid dividends in the national championship. At the same time, their offense is very grueling. They just ran you over. They had a senior quarterback or a, a very experienced quarterback that knew how to keep the chains moving. And you just keep handing it off to your running backs. And then eventually, they found guys like Wilson Deep and... There was a problem because they could then use all facets of the game. And they're just exceptionally prepared. They're well coached and prepared for their games. It looked a lot like old Alabama football. That's what it looked like, if I'm being real. Nonetheless, they go out there, they win. They've been dominating. They beat Ohio State, uh, Penn State. They beat Iowa, obviously. And then they go beat Bama in overtime and beat Washington for the national title. Now, kudos to me. My preseason poll, Michigan was number one. The world scoffed at me. Nobody could believe it. Go back and find the post on TikTok. But I did my preseason top 25, and my Michigan was my number one team. I felt they were the most prepared. I liked a lot of things about them, and I knew it was coming. So shout out to them for keeping it true, keeping it real, and uh, being there. Now, before I go and pat my back, myself on the back too much, USC was number two, just so we're clear. And the wheels fell, fell off there. Shout out to Lincoln Riley. Nonetheless, 2023 was a dream season for Michigan fans. But what happens after the season? You go, you lose your coach. You lose your starting running back, your starting quarterback, your starting wide receiver, many defensive starters, many offensive line starters. You lose a ton of talent, NFL caliber. And if there's anything we've learned about these teams that lose NFL talent and NFL players is you better have the cupboard stocked. And I don't necessarily know if Michigan – has the cupboard stocked with NFL caliber players. They definitely have some very good players. I think they have some nice pieces, but they don't have the pieces that matter the most when it comes to impacting your win total. So if I go look at their 2024, or as you were, I apologize, their 2023 stats, first thing most glaring is the quarterback position. J.J. McCarthy is departing. That is a Michigan man, probably the most winningest, co winningest quarterback in Michigan history. Goes out there, he's Ken Dorsey 2.0, and he's getting ready to go to the NFL. Now, I'm not a huge fan of J.J. McCarthy, but 22 touchdowns, four interceptions can't be ignored. The way he takes care of the ball, the way he spreads it, the way he makes plays, more power to him. The more glaring thing to me is who's the backup. And the backup is Alex Orgy. They always say there's an Orgy in the end zone. But if you look last season, Alex Orgy did come in the game. He never threw a pass, not one. 
And this is why those hype videos on TikTok and YouTube shouldn't get you gassed on how great of an athlete he is. He never threw a pass. Okay, they let Jack Tuttle throw a pass, actually 17 of them. They let Jaden Dangle come in, and they also have, um, forget Davis Warren there, they also have a freshman, uh, I'm forgetting his name right now, but he's he's going to be one competing for the job. But they're telling me Alex Orgy has the job. I'm watching spring football, and I'm watching passes get ran down. I'm watching passes get deflected. I'm watching passes get intercepted. And maybe it's because the defensive backs are so great. But I think Michigan is leaning – towards a transfer being the starting quarterback i really do and if they don't you're looking at tuttle an indiana transfer or you're looking at orgy winning the job now i think the transfer they should go get a transfer i think that you're going to have to identify and pay attention to who jumps in the portal tampering's happening somebody's going to lose a quarterback job a quarterback battle somebody good or they might even just take a bona fide starter from another team and give him an opportunity. It's going to happen. That's how good Michigan is. They're, they're a job that people want to be at. You know, players want to play quarterback at certain places. I think they can get a very good young prospect and a good young talent and convince him to come. But I, I don't want to just say – the only thing I'll say is this. I don't care who they get. It's not J.J. McCarthy. And it's not the same continuity. Whoever they get, it's a first-year starter, meaning it's their first time hearing these audibles, hearing these plays, hearing these reads. It's their first time in this system, whether they believe it or not. Game time scenario, they've never done it. And more down here, their, their new head coach, it's his same offensive scheme. He's been running it. It's fine. But I know, I know they're not happy with their quarterback position. You can't be. If you have two quarterbacks, you don't have one. Remember that. If you have two guys competing for the job, you don't have a quarterback because you want one solidified starter that the whole locker room follows and believes in. Even the quarterback room believes it, right? The quarterback room, the backup quarterbacks have to say to themselves, our job is to prepare that starter to be great. Our job is to prepare that defense to be great. Our job is not to try to take the starter's job. If you got people still competing for the starting position, you're wrong. At the quarterback position, you shouldn't have that. You need to have a bona fide leader, unquestioned leader. You need to have a guy that when he throws an interception, he's not looking over his shoulder to see if he's being taken out of the game. He's walking to the sideline saying, my bad, coach. And coach goes, no, nah, you got it, man. Don't worry about it. Keep your head up. When you throw an interception and you're looking over at your quarterback's coach, your offensive coordinator, your head coach, and you're worried about whether or not you're being taken out of the game, you don't have the confidence to make those plays. You don't have the confidence to make those reads and, and do your thing. Trust me. I know this firsthand. I remember being a junior on varsity, and there was a guy that was just as good, if not better than me, but I was starting over him. And anytime I made a mistake, I looked over to the sideline, and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are they going to take me out? Are they going to take me out? The next year as a senior, no fear whatsoever. Not worried about a damn thing. I'm out here making my play. I'm making plays. And if I don't make the play, I beat the ground. I say, damn, get up. I, you know, dust off, shake it off. All right, let's go. And you need that type of confidence. You need to be thinking about the next play and the next read, not is coach going to take me out of the game. And I think Michigan quarterbacks are going to be looking over their shoulder all season unless you get a transfer who's a bona fide starter because right now everybody's kind of even and there is no starter. I don't care what coach announces, what he said. I don't care about none of that. I'm just letting you know. That's the way it's going to be. So Michigan quarterback, problem. Running backs, they're pretty good. Pretty good. Blake Horam departing, yes. But obviously you have Donovan Edwards there. Um, I'd say another running back worth talking about. Uh, CJ Stokes hit the transfer portal. Man, who did I want to talk about? None of these guys. And I know there's got Cole Cabana, Rico. Yeah, my God. No, I got people on my list. I, I took notes over here. Give me a second. Who's the kid? Oh, Ben Hall. Is Ben Hall on here? Ben Hall is so nice, y'all. Benjamin Hall, there he is. Benjamin Hall is really nice. And you're going to see this a lot. A lot of Michigan guys don't have a ton of production. A lot of the backups, not a ton of production. But they're good. They're good players, especially on the defensive side of the ball. There's guys sitting on that bench waiting their turn, and they haven't gotten it. And they're going to. They're going to. Receiving. The receiving court leaves a lot to be desired. There is, a, you know, Frederick Moore down there, explosive. I, I think he's the cream of the crop. Uh, I say down there I should 
point to you guys where he's at. He's way down here. Four receptions, 32 yards. Doesn't look like much, but I've been watching spring football practice for Michigan. Frederick Moore is better than his teammates. Just, just real talk. And I'll be looking over the depth chart here shortly, but Roman Wilson gone. Colston Loveland is coming back. That is the best tight end, probably in the Big Ten. Uh, let me make sure. I shouldn't say that without thinking about all the different tight ends, but he's very good. So he's a very good player. Believe in him. Everybody else is kind of missing and gone. And like I said, I believe no matter what's happening, Frederick Moore is a good wide receiver. You will see him on the field. You will see him contributing. There's some other ones like Peyton O'Leary. <laughs> Peyton O'Leary's waiting his turn, bro. He's going to get out there. He's going to do the damn thing. Shout out to English as well. Um, kicker, Adam Samara, will be competing. He will be the guy. Adam Samara. Defense, problems. Michigan losing everybody, bro. Junior Colson, NFL caliber, on my top 15 list of every position group. Michael Barrett, one of the best dual threat quarterbacks around. Moved to linebacker on my board. Oh, just so we're clear, I have a draft board. I want to try to pull it up here. Here's my NFL draft board. And if you look on the defensive side of the ball, there's Mike Barrett. I just talked about him, right? Um, there's Junior Colson. Just talked about him. We're going to keep going. You're going to see Chris Jenkins. You're going to see Michigan guys, former Michigan guy Tyler Upshaw. You're going to see Michigan guys on my list because Michigan is loaded. I don't have Sinistro up here. My, my bad, bro. Michigan defense is out of control. It was so good. And you're losing all those players. So I need you guys to understand just how good some of these players are. Now, Ernest Hossman, that's the transfer. Although he didn't start last year, he is third on the team in tackles, 46 tackles. Uh, they spread everything around. There was no singular star on this defense. There was a lot of three and out. There wasn't enough time to get a bunch of stats. <laughs> they didn't get a lot of stats. Some teams would go out there and throw the ball, trying to catch up because they were trailing. So you got a lot of passes deflected and, and sacks. But we're punting the ball, and then we're going to keep it for a good eight-minute drive. That was Michigan's motto. So you don't see hundreds and hundreds of tackles and you don't see double digit passes deflected or double digit tackles. You don't see that stuff. Doesn't matter. The talent's there. Ernest Hossman's a big kid. The transfer portal guys try to tell you he was the number one linebacker in the transfer portal. I told you he wasn't. I told you it was Nick Jackson, the Iowa transfer, who proved me right 100%. But there was other players out there that were better. Ernest Hossman will be a starter this year, expected to be a leader. I think he's a good player. Just needs some time to develop to become that, that alpha male, that guy, right? He will be a, a good guy in a couple years. But right now, he just looks solid. He looks solid. It, it's a good pick. Losing Mike is tough, bro. Losing Mike is tough. Losing six interceptions, 232 return yards and two touchdowns, two forced fumbles. This man is a baller, fifth on the team in tackles. It's a, it's a problem. Okay, we'll talk about it. Another guy to talk about is Josiah Stewart. Josiah Stewart was probably the second or third best player at Coastal Carolina two years ago. And he was probably the best defensive player. Um, obviously, I'm thinking about Willie Lampkin at center and then the quarterback. But when I look at these guys and, and I say, all right, Josiah Stewart got to Michigan, was not overwhelmed by the moment, able to contribute five and a half sacks. It's a good player, man. The good player. So coming back, he'll be a starter. Losing Jenkins is a problem. They do have Mason Graham, who's a complete stud at the defense tackle position. Uh, and that's another thing. They got Wink Martindale, at defensive coordinator. He's an NFL guy through and through, but knows what to do with defense. I hope he can inspire these kids. The problem I see with NFL coordinators coming down is they're too complicated. They're so good at what they do that they cannot get the kids to emulate – can I get the players to emulate them or be an extension of them on the football field? This happens at many schools, and you'll see them yelling and screaming because the players can't grasp the concept of you know disguising coverages or running things from base but disguising it to look a certain way and trying to confuse the quarterback. It's necessary in the NFL. In college, it's not always necessary. Some of these guys just can't read defenses. Some of these guys are not taught progression reads and not taught how to read the front and how to identify certain formations and hashes and things. And I hope that Wink does not come in and try to feed these kids Make them drink from a fire hydrant. I hope it doesn't happen that way. I hope he takes his time because they're great kids if you let them do their thing. And, and sometimes you can't when you feed them too much. Josh Wallace departing. That was a UMass transfer. He's a good player. UMass? Rhode Island. UMass. I, I believe UMass corner was very good. 
Uh, Kenneth Grant's coming back. Stud. Keon Sab hit the transfer portal, took off to uh, Alabama. Will Johnson's a baller coming back. You know, but I want to go down here and give and show you guys something. There are players way down here, like Zeke Berry. Zeke Berry, one tackle. Nothing else. Forgive Ash. She's drinking water. She's out running around with Kim in the backyard. I'm sorry for all the noise. But Zeke Berry here, one tackle on the season. Complete stud. Go watch the tape. Zeke Barry should be starting somewhere in that Michigan secondary or at least contributing in their nickel package. So just be prepared for that. Guys like this stick out. Another guy is Trey Pierce. He used to have a different name. It wasn't always Pierce, but uh, and I mean that. Like if you go check recruiting websites, he changed his name. But Trey Pierce is him. He will be in the rotation on the defensive front. And that's another guy that will contribute to that stout front seven for Michigan next year. They will have a very dominant defense, and they'll, and they'll look the part. Now, when I go talk about their depth chart, yes, th these are their players here. But look, man, Kendrick Bell, number 12. Kendrick Bell, Ronnie Bell's little brother. He was a quarterback in high school. Showing up, I've been watching him at spring practice. He is him. I don't know how they get him the ball because I don't believe in their quarterback. Well, whoever's going to play quarterback, I don't believe in it. But he is him. And I am telling you, Kendrick Bell's a stud. So they're going to get that number 12 in, in, involved everywhere. Patrick, like I said, Peyton O'Leary will be in the rotation. But the best wide receiver on this team right now is Frederick Moore. He's a good player. So there's three dynamic wide receivers I believe in, plus some others. When you look at their offensive line, they've been patching their offensive line for a couple years now with transfers, and it's really worked out for them. They got all the Stanford transfers, right? They got Hinton, Drake uh, Nugent. They got, uh, who was the other transfer? Ladarius Henderson came over from Arizona State. They got transfers for days, bro. But now they only got one. They only got one transfer, Josh Preby. I think he's coming over from K-State, TCU, one of the two. What is it? I don't remember. Northwestern, my bad. Northwestern. Sometimes it's all up here, bro. But I want to give credit to one young man right here, Greg Ciprin. Greg Ciprin has been a center at Michigan, and he's good. But for whatever reason, they've been finding replacements for him. And it's it's unfortunate for him, man. He's been backing up Remington Award winners, the, the, the top center in the country type deal. Olu, and I can't say his last name. Olu Oluwatani, the transfer from Virginia, showed up, won the damn award. Yeah. He wins the Remington. He's the best center in the country. Olu shows up, and then Olu graduates, and Greg Sippern thinks, okay, it's my turn to start. Coaching staff looks around and says, nah, man, you're not good enough to start here yet. What do they do? They go sign Drake Nugent, a 30, 40 game starter out of Stanford. Kid sticks it out, stays on the team, does not hit the portal. And now it's his chance to start. I'm excited for him. Let's go see what he's got. Miles Hinton, whether you know it or not, this young man has started an absorbent amount of games. He used to be the starting left tackle. I'm sorry, a starting tackle. Played both sides at Stanford. Probably played over 30 games already. So they have depth on the offensive line. They have experience. I think they're going to be okay, especially not losing their offensive coordinator. They're great there. I told you they're loaded at tight end. Yes, losing A.J. Barner hurts. Not the end of the world. Quarterback, it's a barren wasteland of nonsense. Alex Orgy is not the guy you want to go into the season with. Somebody who's never thrown a collegiate pass. The only thing you'll ever see from Alex Orgy is him running the ball, and they'll tell you he's an athlete. Watch all the hype videos. They'll tell you he has a 40-inch vertical and a 440 and all this other stuff. Uh, I need to know how you're going to get my dynamic wide receivers the ball. What are you going to do when we load the box? How can you beat people with your arm? Because that's what made Michigan great last year. That's what get them over the hump is finding a quarterback who knew how to take care of the ball. I don't see 22 touchdowns, four interceptions coming out of Alex Orgy. That was JJ's numbers. That's not coming out of Alex Orgy. So you need to find a different quarterback, uh, and that's real. Jack Tuttle, this guy should not have ever played. I thought he was just transferring to be a coach. This is an Indiana backup quarterback, and I don't know what that's about. Jaden Danigo, uh, not impressed. Not impressed. They do have a, a freshman, like I said, and I'm forgetting his name right now, and that's on me. Uh, I want to say it's Davis or Davies. Brendan Davis. Brendan Davis. I apologize. It, it, there's a lot of names in my head at all times, guys. Uh, like I said, running backs, yes, Donovan Edwards is him. Shout out to Mullings, but I really like Ben Hall. I like Benjamin Hall. Being a redshirt freshman, it's, it's his time, dude. That dude is nice. Turn on the tape. He is nice. Ben Hall is him. 
Uh, defense, really like everybody in their front seven. I've told you about him. The only guy I mentioned is this guy way down here, Trey Price, sophomore. Nobody's talking about him. I will. I like him. I think he's the real deal, okay? Uh, linebackers, let's keep it real. You got, you got Josiah Stewart coming over from Coastal Carolina from two years ago. You got Ernest Hotsman coming over from Nebraska. And now <clears throat> you got Barsham coming over from Maryland. Good young kid. All three are transfers. All three are expected to be the starters and carry this team. All I want to say is, is when are you going to start recruiting Michigan caliber linebackers? Like, that's all I want. You, you get them from the portal, you find them right, but that's because you're missing all over when it comes to recruiting. You're just missing. There's no other way to describe it. You go out, you find a stud in the transfer portal, congrats. Why can't you evaluate them coming out of high school? I, I'm just trying to figure that out. Shout out to Michigan. They're, they're, they're whatever, bro. Defensive backs, I think they're all very good, respectable. Yes, there's a hole here at Nickelback, but don't worry about it. Zeke Berry, nobody's talking about him. Number 10, sophomore, I like him. When I tell you guys I like somebody, they end up being great. That's all I can tell you. I watch film. I go, yo, I like this guy. And he turns out to be great. So Michigan, depth chart. I'm cool with it. The biggest issue I see is a quarterback not being able to get the receivers of the ball. You become one-dimensional at that point. And with your schedule coming up in the next season, it's a problem. Now, you only have two transfers, both of them starters. That's cool. And you didn't lose much production. Yes, some of these players are going to go help other programs. You did lose Keon Sab, who, by the way, a lot of people are like, well, you know, who's Keon Sab? Bro is 6'2", 200 pound safety. That's great size for a safety. That's not a little guy. He's not some 5'10", 180 dude. He's a player. And he came out of IMG. I believe in pedigree. I believe in a lot of things. Keon Sab was on the field contributing last year for a national championship team. Don't get it twisted. Shout out to Hibner going over to SMU. Shout out to Joey uh, Velasquez going to Ohio State. Armand Walker going to Ole Miss. Uh, Darius Clemens going to Oregon State. And C.J. Stokes obviously going to Charlotte. He needed to go find some more playing time. More power to him. And then there's guys in the portal just sitting there. I'm not worried about it. So looking into next season, how are they going to do? Uh, they're going to beat Fresno State. Start the season off, they're going to dominate Fresno State. Shout out to Mikey Keene. Love Mikey Keene and everything he's doing at Fresno State. Fresno State has a good program in the Mountain West. Not ready for the big time. The only way Michigan doesn't beat Fresno State is if it's a trap game. And they're ignoring them because their second game of the season is against Texas. And I'm telling you right now, I do not like the way Michigan – compares, matches up, lines up against Texas. Texas looks bigger, stronger, faster, more experienced, has a quarterback. Texas has everything you want. Texas is going to beat Michigan week two. Put your money on it. Don't worry about a damn thing. That's happening, okay? So Michigan will be one and one. They're going to beat Arkansas State. Then they got the Trojans of USC. I think they beat the Trojans. It is not a cakewalk, though. It is not, not by any means. Next year, Zachariah Branch, his second year of college football, he will probably be the most dynamic player in college football. Like, seriously, the most dynamic playmaking guy out there will be Zachariah Branch. Rico, one player can't beat you. I'm telling you, at the collegiate level, it can. It can be a problem. So don't let it happen. Miller Moss is a, is a great quarterback. Did, did what he did in the bowl game. He's been around for a long time. They do have holes on their team, by, by all means. But... I'm telling you, that's not a cakewalk. That's not the normal Big Ten opponent that Michigan beats up. Michigan beats up non-speed teams. Michigan beats up teams that aren't very fast. They beat up on the Minnesotas, Nebraskas, Rutgers. I, you know, they beat up on these teams who are hapless and can't score. USC can score. It will be a scoring. Like it'll be, they're going to be a problem there. I'm letting you know. I hope Michigan wins that game. I see them winning it. Uh, then they got to beat Minnesota. It'll happen. They go on the road. They beat Washington. They will beat Washington. Washington's not going to be good next year. They've lost a ton of pros. Uh, there's an off season. There's an off week there. They're going to beat Illinois. I like Michigan State, man. I'm telling you guys, it sounds silly. They blew them out last year. But when you lose 
eight draft picks, a head coach that's an all-time great, and you lose the best quarterback your school's ever had, and you're going up against a resurgence like Michigan State, and they're finding players in the transfer portal. They're revitalized with their coaching staff and what they're doing. I'm just telling you. Little brother always plays inspired to begin with. They always make it tough to begin with. And now you got the right metrics in from your coaching staff and everything else. Michigan State looks like a problem. And what's worse is the very next week you got Oregon. And Oregon next season, guys, is, is a scary thought. Oregon is a national championship contender. They have no weak points on that team. Zero. Zero. I've looked at the whole roster. They're loaded in every gr skill group, position group, everything they got. I really believe in Oregon. At Indiana, you guys know that is murder's row for Michigan. I'm sorry. Indiana will be good next year. I think they're going to be extremely improved. I love their coaching staff. I, I have another video, uh, MVPs. I hope you guys watched it. I have Indiana winning eight to nine games next year because I know what the impact of the transfer portal can do. There's casuals out there who don't have a fucking clue. Like, there's people out there who are like, man, are they going to win six games? Watch them do their work i know all their starters i just saw it in the transfer portal they just got 13 starters from the portal it's not the guys who lost last year oh but they've got blown out last year and they're lazy new coaching staff new players indiana looks great i think this is a problem those three weeks right there are a big problem for michigan i'm telling you they're a big problem and then they got an off week northwestern in a trap game they're still good enough to beat northwestern no matter what and then they got to go at Ohio State. So, if you're counting this, I got them losing three regular season games. I got them losing to Oregon, losing to Ohio State, and losing to Texas. And those are all very reasonable predictions right there. Those three put you at nine wins. If you can't win one of those games, you're at nine wins. I'm telling you, they can't win one of those games, and they may potentially lose another one. They may lose another one against USC, Indiana, Michigan State. And I know that sounds crazy, but you got to listen to me. I do this shit. I'm telling you, Michigan will not be as dominant as they were this past year. They won't be as dominant as they've been for the last two years. If you're that good, then that means your coach wasn't that great. That means all these NFL players weren't that great. That means, what, what are we doing? That's not how it works. When you lose NFL caliber players and your coaching staff, Bro, it shows up on Saturday. It shows up on the field. So I love Sharon Moore. I love what they're doing. But they're not going to beat Ohio State. They're not going to beat Oregon. And they're not going to beat Texas. No way. Not those three. So I got them not winning more than nine games. So when they tell you the over-under is nine and a half, I'm taking the under. I've got Michigan winning nine games at best. Going to a bowl game, right? Nine games doesn't get you in the playoffs. Just so we're clear. Nine wins doesn't get you in the playoffs. I got Michigan not going to the playoffs. Just, just keeping it real. They will not be in the playoffs. Your friends don't know, but Rico knows. Let me show you the chart. Here we go on the chart. Win totals. Just so we're clear, I've broken down every single team, every single roster. I've got it as a lean right now, Michigan, under one unit. I might make that a lock and change it to two, two units. I really feel good about it, man. You know what? I'm doing it. I'm making it two units and a lock. You guys got to listen sometimes. I know. It's only minus 192, Rico. There's no value in this. Take the value bet and hope they beat one of those teams. They're not going to. They're not going to. I've looked at the players. The players don't match up. The talent doesn't match up. Now, you've got the spring transfer portal opening, I think, tomorrow. And it's going to be open for a couple of weeks. Pay attention. See what happens. These lines will move after the transfer portal moves. So get your bets in now or be patient and miss your boat. Do what you do. But I'm telling you, Michigan's not winning more than nine games in the regular season. They could finish the season 10 and 3. They win their bowl game, but they're going to the fucking the holiday bowl. They're going to some other bowl. They're not going to the playoffs. Your friends don't know, but Rico knows. Peace, y'all.